Hey folks, Steve here with another a la carte deep dive video. This time what I'll be focusing on is drawer bank two and drawer bank one, which is at the end of the trailer. It's just a shorter version of drawer bank two. Again, using the labeling that Ron Polk uses for his smart trailer. And my the right side of my trailer, no, I'm sorry, my left side is sort of facing the trailer. But this left side is pretty much a modification, but almost the smart trailer. Uh, this side, the right side, is inspired by the smart trailer, but I had to modify this to make it work for me. My trailer is much smaller than Ron's. So on this a la carte video, just focusing on these drawer banks, it is a deep dive, so I'll give you the dimensions of the cabinets, a little bit of construction information about the cabinets, but then we'll take a look into every drawer and see what's in each of those drawers and if there's anything I need to tell you about that. Other than that, you know, if you're not into these deep dives where every drawer is opened and, and there's commentary, then, hey, go find another video. Uh, that's okay. But that's what this is. It's going to be a deep dive video, and so there's going to be some detail there. And, you know, to go through 8, 9, 10, 10 drawers, it's going to take just a little bit of time. I'll edit it down as much as I can, but I'm not a videographer. I'm just doing this for fun because I find trailer tours, deep dive tours, very inspiring, very informational, and I steal a lot of ideas. And so I would like to throw mine out there. And this is kind of an update. It's a 2021 update trying to do a la carte. And uh, as opposed to uh, one that I had from a year and a half, two years ago, I think. So that's what we're doing today. Let's dive into the deep dive a la carte for drawer bank two and drawer bank one. Thank you. So this is drawer bank two, and I have two units of them, two cabinets. So they're the first two with four drawers each. And you see that everything is labeled, and I showed that probably in the flyby. Uh, that way, not only can I find the, the stuff that I have, which, of course, the more familiar I am with my trailer, the less I have to look at the labels, but others that I'm working with can come in the trailer and find things, too. So these are both drawer bank two. And then according to Ron, this very short version of it is drawer bank one. But they're modular, so those two drawers can interchange with these two drawers. These two drawers are simply uh, uh, half versions of this drawer. And so one of these drawers could fit up here. These two drawers could move down there, etc. So there's a lot of modularity here. I never rearranged the drawers, but that's what you could do. Okay, so the other side, you can just kind of take a look. And that's what it looks like. The measurements on these drawer banks. So both drawer bank two, uh, both the middle and the end one here, are 24 and a half inches tall. And that's from the bottom of the actual cabinet, not the, the long drawer base there, but the bottom of the cabinet to the top of the countertop, which you can see is double thickness. And this is all box-wise constructed out of three-quarter or 18 millimeter ply, whereas the drawers are actually constructed out of 12 millimeter or half inch ply. So 24 and a half inches, they are three, excuse me, they are 35 and three quarter inches wide, and that's all three banks. And the drawers, of course, go full depth, and full depth would be approximately 23 inches. Uh, this, of course, drawer bank one being a short, uh, short version, is simply to accommodate the onboard air compressor, which always stays in my trailer, so I don't ever have to take it out. And then what I can do is I can simply use that pigtail air comp or pigtail my air up to the top reel right there, and then that top reel simply would feed out like my electrical right out of that hole in the trailer. And so I can shut the trailer up at night and still leave air plugged in, and I have 150 feet of air hose there to get me onto the job. Okay, so let's take a look at these two drawers out of drawer bank one and two. The top drawer will have a lot of, you know, just this stuff. And the next drawer down will have a lot of that stuff. So here's the top drawer. Uh, just a variety of those miscellaneous sockets that I've had kicking around, all kinds of hammers that I would have, extras, uh, a couple of older stubby sets that I had for box wrenches, and just some miscellaneous pieces that I did not know where else to go with. Uh, a couple of dowels, and uh, some containers, and a whole bunch of extra wrenches I inherited from one of my grandfathers when we had to clean out his tool bench. 
Second drawer down in drawer bank one, I have a variety of saws, several coping saws, a couple I inherited again from my grandfather, and then a hacksaw and a smaller hacksaw. That is actually a drywall saw. It's not just a regular hand saw, but it's for drywall. There's my dado stack. I have a variety of pieces there for my multi-tool. Long blades that don't fit anywhere else for my sawzall. And I have some older jigsaw blades. Here is a variety of, again, multi-tool blades. Blades for my jigsaw, the newer one actually. And then I have both wood and metal blades set up for my saws. Moving on to the middle cabinet of uh, the drawer banks, which would be drawer bank two. Top drawer, wrenches, basically a lot of hand tools are what you're going to find here. So here we go into uh, various like kitchen dividers uh, for utensils. So I have lots of wrenches and screwdrivers, all these things that I've had just kicking around all over the place. Now I can find them. Some of my larger uh, wrenches, some screwdriver kits, bunch of chisels, which I took the time to sharpen not too long ago, tons and tons of Allen keys and a file set. Second drawer down, we'll have staples and a stapler. And it's where I keep all of my air finish nails. Okay, so here we go. So I have a slap stapler, a couple of squeeze staplers, and a variety of staples that I've collected over the period of time for that. And then the rest of it's pretty much devoted to my air trim nailers from 16 gauge over here, two and a half, two all the way down to one, I think. I have some 23 gauge right there, one inch pin nailers I'm very happy with. And then it gets into the 18 gauge and I have a whole variety of sizes of there, all the way from something like a 5 8 up to a 2 inch. And then I do have one stapler that'll take up to, I think, 1 inch staples. So I've been very, very happy with this drawer. And all of these are free, so you can just grab it and take this with you. It's not locked in to anything, and I often do that. Next drawer down will be basically all things plumbing that did not make it into my plumbing kit. And of course, I had a little extra, well, not of course, I had a little extra space for hole saws. Okay, so here we go. Small sticks of PEX, lots of copper fittings, because I still do sweat copper. Basket wrench, various parts, uh, tapes, glues, my stub outs for when we're doing new construction or remodel. Here is a lot of my soldering kit stuff, along with some miscellaneous. This, you know, certainly I could use a little more organization here, but I am tight on space. Just a variety of different hole saws and arbors that are not in kits. And then all back here is devoted to just plumbing parts, all kinds of plumbing parts for, you know, just interior drains. It's not like rough construction, uh, you know, rough in construction. It's just all finished parts. Last drawer down in the middle will basically be about saws, so it's really, it's router, router bits, and some saw accessories. And this one I have a hard time uh, arranging and making it look neat. So here it is, uh, here is one of my router kits. I have two identical kits just like it. That's one, the other one does not live in the trailer at the moment, no place for it. Router bits of all kinds, but I don't have a huge selection of router bits. Then I have uh, my bench, uh, parts, so bench cookies, bench dogs, all kinds of bench dogs. That brick right there is for cleaning off a belt sander. Then here is my miter box stand material holders. And then some parts for the saws themselves down in there and parts for routers as well. And then there is my router bushing kit. I think I have two of them now. All right, so the very first drawer bank, it's drawer bank two still just as far as the size goes, but here it is and we'll go from the bottom to the top. So the bottom drawer is basically all about drills and drill bits, and then a few other things besides. So let's check that out. So when I open it up, this is what I see. Various kits, kind of a go-to go -to set of drill bits. Various kits I didn't want to break up that I can just grab and throw in a bag if I'm not taking the trailer with me. Uh, all of my extra drill bits and you know various brand new drill bits I hadn't put uh, into kits yet. This is an organizer that I actually took all of those bits from all kinds of kits and just arranged them to make sure that I could actually find the bits when I needed to. Underneath that, all things spade bit, both sizes, just basically large and small. That's one of those Daredevil uh, spade bit kits. That's for my rotary hammer. 
and that is just specialty drill bits. Here I have a right angle, I have one of those flex bits, I have some of the longer bits, pilot bits, etc. Things for drilling concrete, a couple of other kits besides, Craig pocket hole jig. Just got this in, hadn't opened it yet, but a square hole drill bit set. So when I need that, I'll be anxious to find it or to use it. And then long auger bits, and then just one of those manual drill presses there as well. So there's drill bits. So the next drawer down is about electrical. So electrical tools, and that's, well, that's the only label there. This is one I have trouble keeping organized because it just grows and it's really outgrown itself. So this used to look a lot neater, but I have so much stuff in it now that it's really, really tough. So let me clean out just a little bit of the top layer. Okay, by removing that, this is what we're left with. So you see a couple of my multimeters, a variety of electrical tools that I don't need all the time, but I have when I need them. Various types of Romex connectors and, and other things, electrical. And then over here, what I have are jars of wire nuts of different color sizes, staples, the yellow, the red, the gigantic blue, staples, staples, staples crimps, small cable staples, large crimps, and a few other uh, tools beside, or a few, yeah, a few other tools besides testers and uh, pigtails. And then really, you know, no one has told me they're not code yet, and I've had a couple of jobs inspected, but these wing nuts that actually have the hole in them, so you can twist your grounds together and actually have a ground coming out of the end of this cap and actually then attach to a fixture. Uh, such as a uh, switch and I like that because it eliminates a lot of uh, having to add an extra wire to make that happen So let me show you really quickly these kits because it is a deep dive Okay, so these three kits I've just pulled out right here uh, Very happy always to have uh, different size screws that are dedicated more to electrical so they're number eights uh, Not really overly happy that they're almost all flathead in this kit I just didn't realize what I bought it at the time. In a world of Phillips, I'm not really happy with Flathead. This is a kit that I assembled with all kinds of uh, just those nipples and fan parts and, and uh, hangers and nuts uh, that would go on the nipples and such. Very happy with this kit. Don't have to go to it too often, but when I do, it's nice to have the parts. And then I have this kit where I have uh, plate screws of different colors. And I have all kinds of different, in most cases, Phillips screws. And then I have various types of crimp connectors uh, for spade and, and all of that stuff. So very happy with this kit. This is often a go-to kit, especially if you're in a house and you want to actually leave and leave some nice fresh screws so it looks like you've been there and you've done something and you didn't goof up a screw. Okay, almost done with this deep dive. Uh, if you've stuck with me, thank you. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying it. Next thing is basically just hand tools for my tool belt. No surprises here, I've actually screwed these sorters into the base of the cabinet so when I open the cabinet up they don't move around. But these are all things that could go in my tool belt to head out onto a job. And it's specific to, you know, just the hand tools that I would grab more often than what is in the other drawer where I have a lot of, uh, a lot of hand tools like chisels and stuff like that and extras. So these are just the things that I would grab specifically, like extra punches and sets, a small hand level, you know, nine inch torpedo level, a couple of, uh, you know, chisels I have ready to go, a few extra screwdrivers, cat's paw, nail puller, some uh, snips, uh, plumb bob, and then, you know, a few different pliers and wrenches over there. The idea behind this particular drawer was that I would empty my tool belt into this when I would get done with the job and then fill it from this. But then it became too impractical to actually to always empty out my tool belt, which is... It's backwards now, but right down in there. It just became a hassle to actually take everything out and put everything back. And so I generally leave it loaded with the typical stuff like speed squares and all. And then this is just when I need it, it's there. Okay, last drawer is what I think Ron and others call the prime real estate. And I have in there uh, just a kind of handy husky kit I'll show you. Some extra utility knives, stud finder, stair gauge, levels, and some measurement tools. Okay, so here you have it. Now that Husky kit that you see right there is so handy that I think I must have like seven or eight of these kits. And I probably bought them for all of my family members as well. It's just a handy kit because it has a little bit of everything for those really small jobs. So very happy with that. 
There's a bunch of extra magnets. These are the magnets that I buy off of the internet and are all around my trailer. Uh, some extra glue bot parts that looks like a drawer slide material, extra markers, three, not one, not two, but actually three stud finders, my infrared gun, extra, it looks like utility blades. Here's my fast cap marking material. So if you're wondering what like all of this labeling is coming from, it's actually a PVC material and this is where I get it. It's basically edge banding and I get it from fast cap. It's about $20 for I think a 25 foot roll, whatever that came in as. And I have been incredibly happy with it and I like the high contrast. So I went ahead and got the yellow, I think, or orange, whatever color it is. At some point, I do have a tape measure that I would like to actually embed in my uh, countertop, but I have not done that yet. And then other than that, I have some spacing guides and some uh, brass blocks, a couple of uh, line levels, extra utility knife and scrapers, uh, just some miscellaneous measurement tools, my uh, uh, electronic tape measure down there, and I have my uh, digital caliper in there as well. So this is what I have in the prime real estate, just all things measurement and related to measurement, I guess, and more. And there you have it. Okay, so there you have the deep dive into drawer bank two, drawer bank two, and drawer bank one. Um, all identical as far as width, and uh, the middle and first are identical in height. And then this is simply, if those are 24, drawer bank one is probably going to be 12 inches tall, more or less, to accommodate the drawers. All that is topped by a countertop, so it's kind of double thickness on the top. And the countertop is just a four by eight sheet of plywood. My countertop is longer than eight feet, so I actually have a, um, a joint and then the balance of it back there. But uh, other than that, very, very happy with all the trailer. This side, of course, is what we're looking at now. Very happy you stuck with me for a la carte, drawer bank two and one. Take care. See you on the next a la carte.